Hi, this is John Wobenhorst, and welcome to this description today. I'm going to be talking about music of India for the Western flutist. It's a new course I put together that really helps Western flutists explore the beautiful music of North India. But before I talk, I thought I'd just play a little bit so you can get the feeling of what I'm talking about. I'm going to play some of uh, Rag Yaman in Rupak Tal, which is a cycle of seven beats. And uh, Rag Yaman, just a few minutes, just to give you a, a brief idea of what I'll be talking about. So here we go. Rupak Tal of seven beats. Tin, tin, na, di. So that was a brief example of Indian music on the Western flute, and I thought I'd just give you a little history of how I even got into this. I mean, I grew up playing the Western flute, I was playing the Bach flute sonatas, I was doing some different jazz, even some Jethro Tull rock stuff, and, uh, but also along the way I started to hear different parts of Indian music. Maybe the first place was the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. I think that came out in 67 or 68. Anyway, there was that one song, Within Without You, by George Harrison. We were talking about the space. Well, that piece, if you notice, there's no Ringo, there's no Paul, there's no John. It's basically just uh, George Harrison with some Indian musicians that he met through uh, probably association with Ravi Shankar. And so that was one of the first doses of Indian music that I got. And then my high school library had one Indian music record, Ravi Shankar, at the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967. And this was a revolutionary recording for me because I listened to this record almost every day in my library. And I was drawn to the music, except I couldn't figure out how could anybody play like that? <laughs> how could they play on and on, endless stream of ideas? He was obviously improvising, but there's obviously some kind of deeper structure going on. Anyway, I was really taken by that recording, and that really got me listening. I listened more and more to a lot of uh, different Indian music. I also, of course, had noticed that some of my favorite musicians were getting influence from Indian music. There was John Coltrane, who had had communications with Ravi Shankar, and he was so impressed that he named his son Ravi Coltrane, who is still playing to this day. One of my favorite projects involving some Indian musicians was John McLaughlin's Shakti Group, where he was playing with some outstanding Indian musicians, and he himself was taking a lot of time to learn the Indian music system, while at the same time bringing all kinds of Western jazz influences. There's the group Oregon, especially Colin Walcott, who had learned both sitar and tabla, and integrated some of those sounds into their group. And really, I could go on. Julian Bream had some interactions with Ali Akbar Khan. Philip Glass had also spent some time with Ravi Shankar. Alan Havanness, a great American composer, had gone, on, I believe, in the 50s on a Fulbright scholarship to India. So if you start to look around, you can see many, many great musicians have taken inspiration from this music. So continuing on in my own life, I got to the point where I was so taken by this music, I put all my belongings in storage, and I went to India. And through a wonderful series of events, I got to meet Hari Prasad Charasia, and he agreed to teach me. So I was really overjoyed. So at this point, I had started playing the Bansuri. Bansuri is a beautiful instrument. It's really just a simple piece of bamboo with some holes in it. But because of its structure, you can bend the notes a lot more than the Western flute.
So I stayed in India for several years uh, studying with Hari Prasad and it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And at the end of that two years time, he, uh, at his suggestion, I enrolled in the Rotterdam Conservatorium in Holland where he was teaching. I enrolled in the Rotterdam Conservatorium and I studied with him for an additional 12 years there. So this was just an incredible experience to be immersed in music with such a great master. And I'm very grateful that the whole experience happened. Uh, so anyway, at that point, I was spending, I was back in the United States and I was doing a lot of teaching. And I was teaching a lot of people the Bonsuri. And that was great. But I also noticed that a certain amount of people wanted to learn Indian music concepts on the Western flute. They'd already put 10, 20, 30 years of experience and practice in the Western. And uh, while the Bansuri is a wonderful instrument, it's actually a very difficult instrument because you, to get the notes, you've got to partially cover some of these holes. You've got to partially cover the holes while you're moving really fast. So to get the intonation correct takes a lot of time and practice and patience. It's like learning a new instrument. So for a lot of people, uh, they don't want to do that. They would, they, they would rather learn on their Western flute. And so because of that, I have created this course, Music of India for the Western Flutists, where I've adapted uh, some of the things I've learned from Hari Prasad and others and adapted for the Western flute. Now, the Western flute has some limitations in terms of expressing some of the ornaments, especially the gliding. But you can make fantastic, beautiful music with the Western flute with the inspiration of Indian music. And so I've made this course. So I really hope you'll join me on this course if you want to go deeper into this wonderful music. To me, this music in India is like a magic carpet ride. And somehow this music embodies the spiritual essence of this great sacred culture. So it's just a wonderful thing to experience, number one. And secondly, just increasing your musicality, the incredible dexterity you can gain from playing the different rhythms and the uh, the knowledge of improvising in this modal tradition. Again, we're talking about the ragas, the melodic, melodic forms, and the talas, the different rhythmic cycles. They don't have harmony in the same way that much of our Western music does. However, it's a beautiful, rich tradition, and I just want to uh, uh, express my, uh, uh, my willingness to help you go deeper into this music and just have the wonderful time that I've had with it. So before I go any further, let me just take some time and go through the course that I've set up. So here you have it. Here's the course that I've set up, Music of India for the Western Flutist. We start out with this welcome section, and each lesson has a videotape at the top. Some of these videos are over 30 minutes. A couple of them are only like 10 minutes. But it's, there's really hours of instruction in this whole course. Uh, in this welcome, we're talking about some of the fundamental concepts of Indian music. What is a raga, ascending and descending scales. And I've got some great video of Ravi Shankar expounding on the approach, the refinements, and some of the specialities of the music from India. Then the first lessoner section is about just about some more fundamentals. We want to know about the sargam. We have in our Western music, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ef, sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni, sa, sa, ni, da, pa, ma, ga, re, sa. And what is, what is a raga? This is a good question. What is a raga? We discussed that. Ascending and descending scales, and some of the basics about playing Indian music. I've also included some other resources in the course, things I found on the internet, the evolution of Hindustani North Indian music. There's a very practical video here about how to use iTabla Pro. That's a fantastic app that you can use on your phone that can play the drone, can play the various different rhythms. It's really a fantastic practice tool. And then there's a little video here about uh, getting used to using sargam, because we encourage people to learn how to use sargam which is Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da, Ni, Sa. Although, during the course, I'm going to expound and tell you the Western notes as well. Then the next lesson is about the beauty of a lap. A lap is usually the introduction to a raga, where you're playing with no time, with no time cycle, but you're playing uh, the melodic outline of the raga. It's a very beautiful, meditative form of this Indian music. And we're going to be actually learning a specific raga during this course, rag yaman. And I'll be demonstrating exactly which notes you use, how to approach those notes, and how you can develop the alap section of Indian music on the Western flute. And again, there's some more things in here. I'm going to have some examples of this rag yaman from Hari Prasad Charasya, Z.M. Dagar, 
Also, I have an example from Shiv Kumar Sharma and Zakir Hussain. This is a very interesting one because Shiv Kumar Sharma uh, plays an instrument known as the Santor, which is kind of like an Indian hammer dulcimer. But the interesting thing is that he cannot bend the notes. So even though we are limited on our Western flute as well in terms of the ability to bend the notes, you can still render this music in a very beautiful form as demonstrated by Shiv Kumar Sharma who has rendered many wonderful, beautiful ragas, even though his instrument cannot bend as well as other instruments. Then there's another recording by Paul Horn demonstrating a raga known as Shiva Ranjani that I demonstrate in this course. The next lesson, the third session, is about jor, which is a further development of the raga. We start with a lop most of the time, and then you have the jor section. I'm going to demonstrate that again in rag yaman, and the further development of the raga. Also, in this lesson, I've got a recording of Jean-Pierre Rampal playing with Ravi Shankar, so you can hear how a Western flute sounds in a classical Indian music context. The next lesson is really one of the most exciting. That's developing the raga within the concept of tala, because basically Indian music has two main features. You have the melodic forms, the ragas, and you have the rhythmic patterns, or the talas. So in this one, we're going to start playing rag yaman, we're going to start playing first in Rupak Tal of seven beats, and then we'll be playing in a 16-beat in a cycle known as Teen Tal. And we're going to start talking about how to improvise within these Tala structures. And then I've got an example of me playing Rag Yaman in Rupak Tala and Teen Tal on the, on the Bansuri. And, we all, and I also have a videotape of uh, Zakir Hussain one of the greatest, if not the greatest, tabla player or North Indian exponent of the great tabla drums. And he talks about the whole language of tabla, the whole language of North Indian rhythms. And then we have our fifth lesson, which is a conclusion, just sort of tying together all that we've gone through. By this time, we've developed many different sections of a raga, a specific raga, rag yaman, which hopefully you'll be playing at this point with your Western flute and also how you can continue with this music because there's lots of resources and ways you can continue with this music. And I've added some more special things here. I've added the very famous Beatles Within Without You from Sgt. Peppers and of course some great footage from Ravi Shankar at the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967. And uh, actually it was just Ravi Shankar's 100th anniversary. He died uh, like eight years ago but uh, can never thank him enough for his incredible dedication in bringing this great music to the whole world. And then I also have an example of my group Facing East and it shows you how I've integrated ragas into a jazz setting. So that is lesson five. Then I have a sixth lesson. I was going to stop after five but <laughs> I realized that I've written a lot of compositions uh, for my group Facing East which is kind of a jazz Indian fusion and um, I realized you could get a lot of knowledge just playing this music. And so I've got the actual charts written out in Western notation that you can just simply play. And you can get recordings. Most of all these, most all these pieces are on YouTube. And you can just play along with the recordings and play with the sheet music. And I realized this could be a great way to just introduce you to many more ragas and also get your fingers moving in certain patterns that relate to these ragas. So I included that. And at the end of this, I've got even some more beautiful resources I've found. I have found a great video of the great classical guitarist Julian Bream, who interacted with Ali Akbar Khan uh, in the early 60s, actually. And he talks about his interaction. And then uh, I finish up with a really nice interview from John McLaughlin, the uh, brilliant jazz guitarist. And John and I have been friends through the years, but uh, he talks about how Indian music has been a very integral part of his life and how his interaction with Indian music and how much he's gained from it. And he's one of the musicians that I uh, know who's really applied and learned a lot from Indian music. So there you have it. That is the complete course. I say complete course, complete for now. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to be adding to this course. And we had planned to sell this for $97 and eventually as we add more to it, it'll probably be more like $197. But I realize we're in a pretty crazy time in this world and I know that you and other great musicians out there are struggling so I really tried to uh, drop the price significantly so people could get involved in this music. Maybe you've got some extra time, you can want to delve into this music. So um, that's why I made the price what it is right now. So I hope you can take advantage 
and I'd love to hear your feedback after you get involved. You can always check us out at, on our Facebook page, John Wobenhorst Music, or my website, johnflute at msn.com. I'm sorry, john at johnflute.com. <laughs> So on this page, if you look to the right, you can see where you can get involved. Just sign up the email and put in your credit card or some PayPal information. And, uh, or you can always go to this uh, link, and this can link you to it. Go brightworldarts.org forward slash India, and you can access this course. So I look forward to hearing from you, hearing from your feedback, and I look forward to you getting into the music of India for the Western flutist.